All right, so we finished spraying and we're gonna load up and head to the next field. Um, just wanted to show what we need to check before we get going here. Um, so usually I turn on the truck uh, first, which I didn't this time, um, my mistake, and turn on the lights. And then you just kinda, when you're done chaining everything up, you just walk around the truck and trailer and make everything's good. So you just check and make sure your tires all look good over here. Um, another thing, especially in the morning, is you just make sure all your chemicals secure. It's not going to fall out and count it. Make sure you aren't short anything because it's the worst when you get to the field and then you realize you didn't grab it all or they didn't bring everything to you. Um, then you need to just check your sprayer and um, and the two back axles here on your trailer. Just make sure all the tires look good. Um, no hydraulic leaks or any leaks on the bottom of the sprayer. It's a pretty good time to catch things like that. And then you just gotta check your boom and make sure it's up in the cradle. And then we just <clears throat> walk around to the other side, kind of do the same thing, you know, and then also, you know, if I had the truck on, I'd be checking my lights. I always rough with my lights on. People see me better coming down the road. Um, looks like these look good. Boom looks good too. And then the last thing I forgot to mention is you need to make sure you have your caps on, but also you need to make sure you're chained up tight, that your chains all look good. Um, I've seen a lot of guys, they'll just put one chain on and then they'll head down the road going, you know, 60, 65 miles an hour. And I don't like that. We put all four on every time. Um, just makes me feel a little more secure. Um, all the chemical in boxes look like they're not gonna fall out. Truck up there looks good. Um, lights should be fine. Checked them this morning when we left. They were all working. So yeah, should be able to go. I'll be driving. Houston hasn't really gotten comfortable with this truck yet. So maybe next time, buddy. We just got to the field. And we're going to have Easton here practice doing his math. That's the first thing you want to do when you get here. You know, once you shut off the truck, do your math. And the other thing you got to do is make sure you get parked in a good spot. Um, you know, we kind of wanted to be on the right here, the edge of the field, out of all this grass over here. Um, some of you guys get pretty picky about the grass, so make sure you're always on the edge. And when you load up that, you know, your water and stuff maybe hits a good dirt patch or something, try to keep it off the grass. If you're ever uh, cleaning the tank, rinsing out, make sure you go to right on the edge, the barrel pit next to the road or right next to the field, just don't kill their grass. All right. So we got to the field, we did our math, we unchained the sprayer. Um, he's just gonna pull it off here. Uh, first thing you kinda wanna do when you start the sprayer though, is make sure you back up, you know, just a little. Get away from your, your tank here. So you don't, you know, the sprayer when it inflates, I'll kinda wanna tilt like this and I'll kinda push the nose right into the tank and break the light. So you just wanna screw back a little, then let it build some air. And then you can go ahead and back up and I'll uh, pull it off and pull off over to the side and load up. Um, but you just want to make sure you get some air just so your bottom of your sprayer doesn't catch on anything. It's not a ton of room when you're coming off there. Nicely done, Easton. Then pull over there and we'll start loading up. Okay, so Easton pulled it off the trailer there, put some rinse water in, and before we get going too much further, he's gonna check his math again. If you wanna check that three or four times, because that's your costly mistake is loading wrong. Um, yeah, how's it going, Easton? It's going good. It should be really easy, it's one chemical today. Okay, so just rinsing the sprayer here. We're on the last one, and um, Easton's gonna go ahead and check his tips this time. So he turned it on, spraying over here. He's gonna, it's kinda hard to tell. You can see it a little. He's just gonna check him real quick. Hurry! Um, and then just make sure you're upwind of this or else it'll kinda spray on you gets annoying to get that chemical and stuff all over you all right so we're all ready to 
start mixing got our water hooked up here so the first thing you want to make sure you always do you know we did our math two times and now we're going to set the chemical out you know up here on the table before we um before we start turn anything on and start mixing it you know you want to set it out count it double count it i mean we just really can't mess up mixing i mean that that could be a couple hundred thousand dollars mistake if you know one time one little mistake so today's easy like i said one chemical we're putting 10 gallons in and that's 10 gallons right there right easton 10 gallons yep that's 10 gallons all right so he'll come down here start his pump up then dump it in and rinse it out And of course the battery's dead. Good thing we got the pull start. Yeah, and always make sure you put on your your PPE before you start mixing. Um, you can set out your chemical before you put it on. That's what I like to do. My dad and Mason just put it on when they first get up there and then set everything out. But yeah, like I said, just make sure you set it out before you start mixing. Now these drugs are a little hard to open. Good thing he's a pretty tough guy. I think he got third in state in wrestling one year. So this stuff we're spraying is called Reclaim. It's pretty much a foo foo juice. So technically he doesn't really need to be wearing any PPE, but we put it on all the time. Just keep your clothes clean. You don't have to. This one smells kind of bad, so then you want to get it, get it on them, and smell bad the rest of the day. It's gonna fill up to 790 is what we need today. Small field. Must be a tough lid. So something else to be mindful of is a lot of the times you don't want to open that valve all the way while you're sucking out. So you can always have at least something in here or else you'll suck air. And then that can make things real foamy in the tank. That kind of messes up that. You know, it messes up your um, your flow meter because you're sucking air, and then it'll make things real foamy in there, and it's hard to top off the tank when it's foamy sometimes. Make a big mess. So always just crack that a little until you're, you know, got everything in there, and then they go ahead and open all the way and let it drain. of the tank there and then let it drain and should be able to turn it off. All right, I think this video is long enough. All right, we got everything loaded. Um, that was actually our last, well, our only load for today. So we put everything away. Um, now we're just gonna take a wind reading and then we'll hop in the cabin. Put in all our information 
Um, here's Easton taking us a wind reading. It's actually not a breeze hardly out here. So just trying to find one. But yeah, anyways, take a wind reading and we'll go put it in the computer every load. And then it just kind of maps it on the John Deere website for us so it can always show the state when they ask that where we took the wind reading and how much it was blowing. Um, so we got Easton here again. So he's just gonna put the information in his computer, select the field, put in the chemical, the mix, um, the weather, and then we're gonna double check to make sure we're in the right field. So I like to use the My Operation app um, if it's a field we've sprayed before. If not, I always use the, the work orders usually come with a map nowadays. Uh, a lot of the ones that are on email, they have a link. You just click it and it shows you on your you know, Google Maps exactly where you're at. Um, and then the third way I check, so you gotta check it at least two different ways. Um, but the third way to check is on the blocking unit map. Um, I actually just checked it and we are in unit 118. So we should be good and I just checked it on the work order and we are in the right field and, and it says we're in the right field according to the my operation so we should be good. Um, so yeah, you can assume the weather then we'll put in the, the mix and then we'll charge the boom and we should be ready to go. And we just got 35 anchors of mint there disking up so should go fairly quick.